something going on with Kalamasi and a dude named Jerry. <laughs> now, I'm not sure if it's a true story or if Fatima is just making this crap up, but she's been sort of down lately, so Fatima said it's because some dude named Jerry broke up with her. I can't get a straight story out of these ladies. <laughs> Who knows? But what you observe is they're eating a whole sack of bread, a whole sack of rolls before chicken, spaghetti, cake, and they wonder why they're gaining weight. Hello. <laughs> There's Maria. So what do you? That's right, you're six years old now. My sweet girl turned six years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's old grandma. How many rolls is for us, G? Eight. How many did he eat? One. Oh, that's, that's at least the second one right there. He just get the, the other. First, second, third. <laughs> he, 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 oh, he, he just get the brown. <laughs> Oh, he just eat, he just eats the brown off yeah. of it with the sugar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so funny. Four, six, stop, three. And the question is, how many have you ate? Nine. <laughs> That's bola bola. He, he, three, no, no, I, I think two up again. Dad, she eat two. I think she ate three. You realize that's my brand new knife that's very sharp? No, it's not sharp anymore. Look up. It's what? It's not sharp anymore. It's not sharp anymore because you ladies have broke it. What's up? I just put like this, like this, and then I broke it. Oh, you are. <clears throat> <laughs> Birthday 
Diyan pa kuha kung nor dai diyan ba? Hey folks, I'm gonna jump in here and just talk about something. Okay, they're making this spaghetti sauce and you saw them turn their nose up at it, so to speak. And one of the things I like to do here is explain that, you know, everyday life, no matter where you go in the world, is not always perfect. And when you engage in some type of cross-cultural relationship, what do you, whatever you want to call it, cross-cultural, inter, interracial, um, you know, somebody who's outside your, your way of life, you have differences, right? You have differences in way of thinking. You have differences in the way things should be done. And one of the biggest things is you have a big difference on taste. So if you come here to this country, the Philippines, their spaghetti sauce is like very sweet, watery. Um, I mean, it's, uh, it's nothing that you're familiar with if you're used to eating spaghetti in the West. Uh, let me expand that. I've never tasted the same spaghetti style sauce that they have here. I don't think anywhere else in my travels. Uh, and it's not for me. I don't, I don't like it. So if you go to Jollibee, get chicken and spaghetti, well, obviously it's Filipino style spaghetti sauce. So what works for me, works for us to try to, you know, give the babies a range of flavors is, you know, they live in this country. So everywhere they go, if they go to a birthday party, they go to the village, they're going to eat Filipino style spaghetti sauce. Trust me, they live here. They're getting enough of the local culture. So when we cook things like spaghetti here, I insist on cooking it American style, Italian style, Western style. We're not eating the sweet, runny stuff. Uh, and there you go. There, there I am being biased about their, what they like, okay? That's what they like. I don't like it. Well, same thing applies to the way we... Uh, last night we made the sauce. So we had some, uh, what, kind of, what kind of sauce was that, baby hunts? I don't know, come up with some hunts, spaghetti sauce. And it's a very, it's a, it was a good quality sauce, I thought, right? But when they tasted it, it's not what they're looking for. It's not familiar. I mean, the Fatima is, she's been around me for six, seven years, however long it is, six years. But it's not what they want. So they said it was sour. And I'm thinking, sour? What do you mean? Like, it, you know, the can was open or something? What's the deal? I taste it and I'm saying, there ain't nothing wrong with that. That's the makings of a great sauce. You know, it just needs a little bit of garlic, a little, little bit of onions, you know, just to put your the homemade flavor into it. 
but they didn't want to eat it. Okay, so who I got here? I got Grandma, I got Kalamansi, I got Tai Tai, that's Fatima's father. And inevitably, somebody else is going to show up. I said, all right, make it, make it more to your flavor. Sweet. They said it's not sweet enough. We need to sweeten it up. I said, go ahead, put some brown sugar in there. I'm okay with that. So anyhow, we, we compromised. They changed the flavor a little bit to where it was okay to them. And it actually made it pretty good putting that brown sugar in there. I'm not complaining. I'm just telling you that. Filipinos from the village are not culinary adventurous. Why? Because most of their life they've ate the same thing and the same recipe and they continue to do so. If you watch any of our long form videos, any of our shows, what do they cook with? They want to cook with magic syrup and soy sauce, uh, maybe a little salt. I mean, it doesn't deviate on like the sauces and the spices. And if you try to deviate from that and be creative, to be honest, they really don't like it. And so if I go to the village and I, and I say, no, I'm cooking today, and I put a whole spread of like American style, my own style, you know, this one's spicy, they don't like spicy, they're really not going to enjoy it. So I just want to explain my experiences, my opinions about our differences in culture is that uh, the way they like to cook it is the way they like to cook it and don't deviate, don't try to be creative. If you're going to your, your Filipinas village for family day, don't go out there and make some tom yum kung that's spicy, you know. <laughs> Chances are they're not gonna like it. So that's what happened last night. That's what you saw in the clip when they turned their noses up. It just wasn't exact match Filipino style spaghetti sauce. You know, have to cut the camera and be like, ladies, there's nothing wrong with the sauce, okay? You're just pouting because it's not exact match taste to what you want, okay? Just spice it up a little bit, so to speak. You can put some brown sugar in there, whatever you need to do. When they finished this sauce, it was the most delicious Italian-style sauce that I've tasted in a long time. It was absolutely delicious. I don't think it made it any more towards the Jollibee, the Jollibee style. It was the best sauce I've had in a long time, period. I think Fatima did a great job. Anyhow, I thought I'd just pause the video and explain why they turned their nose up at the spaghetti sauce. a mirror with a stand on it hey folks two things why uh, why did Kalamansi hide the rice cooker with my hat well one of Forrest G's favorite snacks which are we have to throttle back is he just loves to get rice and soy sauce and he was wanting that snack more than anything else too much i'm like he's, the boy's eating way too much rice every day okay a plate of rice with soy sauce is not a snack i mean that you know sprinkle a, a couple of sardines on top that's a meal for a lot of folks in this country 
And so he was getting to the point where he was insisting on that. Instead of eating an apple or an orange or something, you know, uh, less carbohydrates. So for a while, we stopped buying soy sauce because he, he, he didn't want the rice unless he could douse it with soy sauce. So he just said, hey, stop buying the soy sauce. And, and that, that put the damper on him. Now, he wasn't happy about it, but you can hand him the plate of rice. He'd look all over for that soy sauce. He couldn't find it. So it naturally slowed down his rice consumption outside of normal meal hours, right? And of course, I just keep telling the Filipinos, hey, just don't give it to him. They're like, well, he keeps crying. What do, you, what do you want me to do? So next thing he's over there, you know, chowing down on a plate of rice. So we got, we sort of got that under control where now he, he enjoys eating apple, orange, you know, some, some type of good snack. But I guess it's just out of sight, out of mind. So what they, what they come up with, what they figured was just take my hat, hide the rice cooker where you don't think about it. Maybe you were wondering why my hat is sitting on top of the rice cooker. Probably a fire hazard, maybe, I don't know. But that's the solution they come up with, you know, just to throttle them back on the rice snacks. So, with that said, I just like to say, okay, sweetie girl, I just like to say thanks for joining us on the video. Uh, we were also just having a local birthday for Maria, you know, just a family, and you know not a huge blowout but you know i did make it back in time we just had a little family get together for her birthday just uh just the immediate family getting together so i'm gonna let the camera run the audio is not great because i just was using the shotgun mic but just give you a glimpse into us eating dinner and like i said you can't hear too much of the dialogue so maybe this might be the end of end of the video that you're interested in for the rest of you here's another I don't know, five or ten minutes of footage of us chowing down on a chicken and spaghetti. It was absolutely, absolutely delicious. They picked out a great rainbow cake over there. She's always been wanting strawberry cake, and most of the time you can't find a strawberry cake. But this, this three-layer cake, what have you, delicious little strawberry layer. Just a wonderful meal. Wonderful meal, just hanging out with the crew. And it's good to be home, my friends. So anyhow, without further ado, I'll say thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one or hang out with us for the meal.